Bill Cower on the NFL Today CBS called it a disgrace to the coaching profession that Indianapolis would give Jeff Saturday a head coaching job despite no experience in college or at the professional level. So, Andrew, I want to start with you on this one. <laughs> Just because I find it interesting that in this world today, you don't necessarily need all the experience. Bill Cower has a job yeah. that he never trained for. He's a big name. He got the job. Was he right in calling out the Colts for doing this? I understand. No, I, I, I respect Bill a lot, and I understand that there's a, there's a racial component to this, which he was not talking about today, by no. the way. Nothing, nothing to do with right. that. Experience. And that's why I have an issue with what he said, because this whole idea where you have to be in the club or in the community or in the fraternity in order to succeed, I've never believed in that in any walk of life. You don't have to go to a journalism school to be a good sports broadcaster. Okay, there are plenty of examples of people that have had other jobs that have come into our industry and been really good at it. Yeah. Somebody that just paid their dues as a producer for 20 years, maybe they're not good on the air. That's just, those are just the facts. So my issue with what he said was, we've seen it in other coaching professions where basketball players, hockey players, baseball players have been successful with no coaching experience whatsoever. Steve Kerr. Right. And some, of, Louis. And, some of the, and some of the worst head coaches the absolute worst were people that paid their dues as coordinators for a long time, then got head coaching opportunities. And they paid their dues for that long because they weren't cut out to be head coaches. Dick LeBeau is a perfect example of that. Awesome assistant coach, not a head coach. Josh McDaniels. So yeah, another good one. Everyone. So I completely took exception to what Cower said today. I thought he was over the top. All right, so there are those examples. But then there's Bill Belichick, Jim Leland, uh, people like that that paid their dues through it. I get what what Cowher's saying. I do. I completely understand his story that, hey, I paid my dues. I had to work my way up, and now they're just going to hand it to somebody. And I know he didn't mean to bring race into it, but how could there not be when you're just appointing this guy from a – from TV well, when you've got Jared Wayne on your staff. Indianapolis followed all protocols that are set for it. There's nothing mid-season that says they need to interview anyone. Um, all this belly aching for me, this is just personal. All this belly aching for me, like this was kind of a non-story. I'm, I'm going to feel it out. I now root for Jeff Saturday. I want him to win. <laughs> I want him to win every game he doesn't play against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, this whole old, there's nothing more old boys club than telling people you can't be in the old boys club and you have to hire someone from the old boys club. And I love Bill Cower. I respect him a great deal, and he knows that. I just think he's dead wrong here. This seems like people are shaking in their boots that somebody might be able to come in and do what they do without doing it for 25 years. Plus, Jim Irsay can do whatever he wants, it's right? It's his team. It's his team. He can do it. And let's also yeah. make this clear. For people that don't know the full story, it's not like he's just a guy off the street, Jeff, Saturday. No, he was, he was hired as a consultant. Right. He was, from what I understand, he was in communication with not just Ursay, but their coaches every week. Frank Reich would talk to Jeff Saturday once a week. So he had a full understanding of not just the players on that roster, but also the coaches. So he's not some stranger to the organization. It was portrayed in the media like he was just a talking head on television who was a great analyst and a really good player but was completely disassociated or disconnected. Right. Like they, like they hired and that's Pat not true. Is that a conflict right. of interest? What? Working for ESPN and still being a consultant where you have access not to coaches. Not a professional, I don't think. I don't think that's a conflict of interest. No. I don't look at it that way. But again, my point is I get where Cowher is coming from because of where he had to come from. You know, he got hurt as a player, had to work his way up, and, and he feels for all the guys that – are missing out on an opportunity to be a head coach that have done all the things that they're supposed to do right. but aren't getting a shot because, as he views it, some guys on TV and they pick the, well, what the pretty would he guy say, off what TV. What would he say about Steve Belichick? Or what would he say about Brian Schottenheimer? These are people that got jobs because of who their fathers were. Sure. I mean, that, that's, that's a different scenario. I get what you're saying. but It works all, in every profession, though. Chris Collins were son. Take nothing sure. against him. But, I mean, absolutely. He's one happens. of the worst play-by-play -play guys I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> and that, I'm serious about that. No, we got to go to a break. Fredo Collins for it. We got to go to a break. When we come back, we'll take a look at down the road for the Pittsburgh Steelers and what these guys see in the next several games.